Week two, the production of isopinyl acetate, that is banana oil, okay, for today's lab. It is an esterification reaction. That is, we're making a new ester bond between a carboxyl oxygen carbon and a new sp3 oxygen. Okay. To do so, we're going to use an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acids and alcohols are what you use to make esters. Esters are made from alcohols and carboxylic acids. Hint, you still have a final. Write it down. These are acid catalyzed. Okay. And um, we're going to go through the mechanism. Although the acid has to be there, we're not going to utilize it directly in the mechanism as it makes things a bit more even complicated than it's going to be. All right, so the source of our electrons for the first step okay, are going to be the unshared pair of, on the oxygen in the alcohol. The unshared electrons in the carboxylic acid okay, are sort of all in resonance with each other and are less likely to um, be donated. In addition, the carboxyl carbon is the best target and so we're going to start with the electrons on the hydroxy alcohol. Here again, they're donated to the carboxyl carbon. Okay. That carbon already has four bonds, so something's got to give, and that would be the pi bond. Here again, pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds, so that's what gives first. Make sure and count your carbons. Okay. That gives us our Zwitter ion intermediate. It is an intermediate, there's no way to clean it up, so the process is going to continue. And take these electrons, bring them right back down. Here again, that carbon's going to have to let go of something. If it's the bond to the positively charged oxygen, we're right back where we started in equilibrium. But eventually, okay, it's the hydroxy that goes. By the way, this is why very often anhydrides are used as they have a better leaving group on the other side of the carboxyl carbon, uh, uh, carboxylate. But certainly with the hydroxide as our leaving group, that's very much strong enough to take off the hydrogen from our now ester link and deprotonate to the product. Procedural notes, the isopinyl acetate is going to go into our round bottom flask. We're going to add the acetic acid to the same round bottom. We can use the same graduated tube measure it without cleaning it. You're both going to go in there. <clears throat> Sulfuric acid. Then reflux it for an hour or so and cool it to room temperature. We've already refluxed, so that's not such a big deal. The reaction then gets transferred to a separatory funnel. Add water, that's going to take away all that acid that might be around. And it should also help get rid of any uh, unused acetic, a um, acetic acid reagent and or some of the isopinyl alcohol. We're going to wash the organic layer with bicarb to make sure it is neutralized. Then saturated sodium chloride to really drive out all the water that might be up in there, dry it, okay, and then decan and distill if we decide that further purification is needed. Here again, that second dis that distillation that's called for in the PDF is a purification step and would be optional if you were doing it based on your uh, mass at the time and what you felt your purity was like. 
then a mass and a percent yield, and you work it up. Okay. Here again, the setup. Um, this is being done in a beaker, as the picture was the first semester we didn't have the water bath dishes at the time. 